Hello, folks. Uh, this is uh, Jordan Hofling, the creator of Greetings from Duskmire. Uh, for any of you that are interested to note that uh, at this point, the recordings do not at this point, whatever, have any background music. That's because I'm not finding anything that really fits with the tone of the uh, story I want to go for here. So, if anyone is interested in uh, helping me out with that, recommending any particular songs or anything that might work, then uh, just let me know. Um, send me an ask over the Tumblr thing here from greetings dash from dash here. <laughs> Sorry, greetings dash from dash duskmire dot tumblr dot com to be able to uh, help me out with that. That'd be cool. And uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoy episode three. <clears throat> Contrary to popular belief, a whetstone will not moisten your hooves, but they can become deadly weapons if you're patient enough. Greetings from Duskmire. Listeners, today we are going to learn a little more about the newest member of our community. No, not that pink, unattractive stallion, Trot Cadero, and his gorgeous twin sister, Elegant Steps. Today, we are going to learn more about the young filly that is as sweet as the confectionaries that her body was constructed from. Today, we will learn more about Fructose Syrup. Fructose Syrup is a rather adorable filly with a green apple taffy coat, a chocolate licorice mane and tail, caramel toffee for teeth, and marzipan for her skeletal structure. She is incredibly polite and kind, which means she does not yet comprehend the unfortunate state of her existence. Well, not necessarily the state of her existence, she already knows that. Apparently, she was reincarnated into this body after a forgotten, untimely accident. All she can remember is that she is in her current form due to the involvement of... Ah, here we are. The physical manifestation of chaos... Madness made manifest through a species of silliness. I think she said his name was uh, Cacophony, Concord, Rift String, or was it Dystopion? Something like that. Being made out of candy in such a manner would explain why she isn't infected with any contagious strains of necrotizing sacrosis. Oh, that reminds me. <clears throat> We regret to inform you that Intern Coffee Grains has sadly suffered a severe work-related injury in a tragic espresso accident, and is no longer with us. Well, he is with us, but not in the same way as before. After attempting to devise a more effective method to improve the flavor of the coffee through the occult art of engineering, he unintentionally created a blend so intensely infused with caffeine that consuming the entire pot in one go has caused him to become separated from the laws of time, and age by two centuries in a matter of seconds, before spontaneously turning into an elementary school-aged foal seconds after that. He seems to have also mentally regressed into cult-hood as well, and has left the communication spire to play with other fillies and cults, including fructose syrup. And speaking of... Wait, excuse me a moment, listeners. Oh dear... Apparently, the station management is requesting that I talk more about the current events and news to space out the information and to remain unbiased regarding this potential biohazardous threat. At least, I think that is what station management is saying. It's difficult to translate the subtle pantomime of a sentient patch of mist in the vague shape of a pony with glowing purple eyes. Also, the interpretation manual I was given is a bit hard to read with all the red smudges, and some of the pages are stuck together. Apparently, Subwoofer thought he could get away with eating strawberry jam sandwiches in the studio. He apparently also prefers his strawberry jam to be seedless, and... Yes, and he prefers it to be made in a poor-quality cast-iron pot. I don't think you're supposed to be able to taste the utensil you've been cooking the jam in, Subwoofer. It's a good thing we all must assume you are dead, despite never having found your body. So now, let's go to the news. The Gilded Ribbon Prance Academy has accepted more students today, reaching the milestone of five students. 
This means that the Academy can officially open up again and receive government funding and magical use threshold coupons for their contributions to the city. After some requests by our intern Skitterflitter, he was able to obtain the list of the other four students that are going to be attending, with himself included as the first. Afterward, however, is Mr. Splitscreen, the androgynous and vertically bi-gendered pony that prefers alternating gender pronouns when referred to indirectly or in third person, or third pony, sorry. Apparently, she has had previous experience in the performance arts before the incident that spiraled maliciously out of control and causes the studio to be shut down a few years back. But he has been practicing on her own in the hopes that he will be able to perform for everyone once again. And I, for one, am excited to see her skill put to use as a fellow veteran prancer. Next on the list is Fluffy Paws, the Pony Griffin Hybrid. Now, as a brief inside, I do need to make a correction to a previous broadcast. It has come to my attention that Griffins are, in fact, capable of some degree of sentient thought. However, without the inclusion of pony DNA, a purebred Griffin is much more likely to be self-centered, possessive of friends to the point of treating all those around them so terribly that they will avoid the Griffin's friend simply by association, and to have a penchant for artificial facial feather coloration akin to the 80s glam rock band Chainlink and the Keystones. But, thanks to the addition of pony DNA in her genetics, Fluffy Paws is fully capable of showing others respect, as well as obtaining the realization of sense of self when looking in a mirror, instead of being tricked into thinking it is another griffin that looks exactly like them, guaranteed autonomy, and significantly deeper character development. You may have even seen her around town. She is the white-coated pony with the hind legs of a Clydesdale pony with traditional fetlocks, and her head, chest, and forelegs are that of an albino raven. When asked for comment, Fluffy Paws reminded me to mention that an albino raven has a very important distinction from a dove. A dove griffin would have much more pronounced, rounder nasal passages in a smaller pink-colored beak, while an albino raven has a longer and only slightly curved beak with thin nasal slits. Aside from that, she is absolutely elated to learn from Miss Debs, whom she happens to be a big fan of, even long since before her arrival in our wonderful city. Fourth on the list is Darling Length, the giraffe-pony hybrid. From a distant silhouetted perspective, she looks partially like a Saddle Arabian, or perhaps a very, very tall pony, but her spotted coat and slightly cloven hooves indicate otherwise. Also, she has vehemently demanded that I mention that she is in no way, shape, or form related to a Saddle Arabian. Now, she may have in fact meant THE Saddle Arabian, that pinto earth pony that claims to be a Saddle Arabian trapped in a pony body. Now, I am personally a supporter for trans species equality, so I would normally request that Ms. Length respect his choice of personal identification. But, it is also widely known by everyone in the city that he does tend to trot around while wearing a plastic saddle, plastic stirrups, and a remarkably gauche fez a commonly known racist caricature of Saddle Arabians. And finally, the fifth member of the studio is... Well, what do you know? It's Miss Fructose Syrup. And look at that. The photograph I've been given shows her prance practicing here on the bar as we speak. She's even wearing a tutu that looks like a candy wrapper. That is just precious. Oh, speaking of, there is an update on Fructose Syrup. Thank you once again, Skitterflitter. Feel free to take your break now, okay? Oh, and I saved some of the extra honey I made in the break room pantry if you want any. What a nice... Upstanding citizen. A nice, upstanding citizen. And most certainly a pony. <clears throat> a further examinations on the flesh samples previously taken from fructose syrup by Her Royal Majesty's Covert Law Enforcement Agency confirms that her current body was indeed artificially created through chaos magic, and therefore provides an appropriate explanation why she has no known strain of necrotizing sucrosis. Furthermore, her healing capacity is just as quick as everyone else in the city, which is a good five times faster than a biohazardous candy zombie pony. So, one could simply take a quick nibble on her, and the hole left in her from that area would be filled up instantly seconds later. 
Of course, as it isn't confirmed that she does or does not have nerve endings that are capable of experiencing physical pain, I would highly advise against this. Or at least, you should try to be polite enough to ask permission first. And now, it's time for the Foles Fun Fact Science Corner. Today, we will be teaching you briefly about the major continents of our world of Equestria. First off, is Equestria, our home continent and the namesake of the entire planet. It is most famous for having the highest concentration of ponies to any other sentient species, including the only nation to have magic readily available for common day-to-day -day use. Next up is Stalingrad, a wintry area known for its Clydesdale pony population and its unique international bylaws stating that the consumption of high levels of salt and the smoking of recreational poison joke tobacco is completely illegal in that area. So is the cannibalism of breezies, but that's pretty much legal everywhere, isn't it? <laughs> Its neighboring major landmass is Britannia, the continent home of Great Britain, the origin of many of the art forms practiced everywhere else in the world, including radio dramas, ballet prancing, theatrical films, and the sister country of France, home of, I believe, what is it? Here we go. Uh, French bread, berets, fine wine, and burlesque tack house musicals. Between the continent of Equestria and the continent of Britannia is the giant cloud archipelago of Here There Be Griffins, the home territory of the mangy avian beasts. And finally, so much further east of Stalingrad that I may as well say that it's directly west of Equestria, is Nasia, previously known as the Kakapoob, the coalition of archipelagos containing Asian ponies, obviously. Of note, the abbreviation uses the first two letters of the word ponies and in the word obviously. The smaller island countries found in Kakapoob include Nepon, Chine, Taiwini, the secret island headquarters of the horse pun Illuminati, and Saddle Arabia. This has been the Foles Fun Fact Science Corner. And now, a word from our sponsors. Don't forget to tune in Thursday night for the finale of Season 5 of Dr. Hooves. Will Rosepetal finally reveal her affectations for the Doctor, whom has given the false name of Sands of Time? Will the Doctor reveal his half gallop brand nature to her? Oh, and will that army of giant amoebas made of teeth take over Equestria? Find out tomorrow night on BBN, the Britannia Broadcasting Network. And tune in right after for the new episode of Sherlock Hooves, The Stradivarius Scheme. Mm -hmm. Oh, listeners, Skater Flitter has just entered the mixing room and is waving his completely holeless forelegs at both station management and the current sound mixer intern mixed tape, trying to get their attention. They are looking at him, uh, he appears to be speaking to them both now, and now all three of them are looking at me with an unusual expression of, I think, disappointment? Or sorrow? I'm... Let's see, they're all nodding. And Mixtape is grabbing a printout and trotting out of the mixing room. Uh, apparently, uh, yes, she is now sliding the press release under the door. Excuse me a moment, listeners. I should take this, I believe. There we go. Uh, oh, it's an update on fructose syrup. Uh, oh, my. Listeners... It appears that fructose syrup has been injured intentionally. I am shocked, listeners, appalled. I admit a new face in town is one that can never be trusted, but little Fruity is just a filly, a filly. The only time a young foal has ever been dangerous to our town was the time the horse devil attempted to be reborn in a mare's immaculate conception, and that was just a fluke. Her husband, Ordobas, said so. Please give me a moment to gather myself, listeners. I just can't fathom why any pony would do such a terrible thing to such a sweet filly. Figuratively and literally sweet, even. <sighs> okay. Okay. I apologize for that outburst. Let, let's look at the details on the poor filly's injury. Oh, goodness gracious. It appears that... Her entire left back leg was bitten off by a colt that was passing by. 
As mentioned before, her accelerated healing capacity allowed it to grow back rather quickly, but as time progressed, other young fillies and colts that were nearby as she walked past them began to take bites out of her body as well, until... until she was swarmed by them. Dozens of foals cannibalizing the poor filly, like a cow dipped in a pond full of yojimbo knife piranhas. I... Oh no, that poor... poor... Wait, listeners, another page has been slipped under my door. Quick second. What is this? Oh, by our queen. Listeners, this is... This is not a mere press release, but a direct message from Her Royal Majesty, complete with the snake eating its own tail encircling a pair of imposing eyes overlooking a side view of the Spire of Monarchy. You know, the Royal Seal of Duskmire. Give me a moment to look this over, listeners. Well, <laughs> wonderful news. Fruity is okay. After they stopped eating her body, all that was left was her brain and major spinal nerves, which were thankfully all made of black licorice, the only candy that is never by any circumstance to be eaten by any foal on the planet. Which makes perfect sense, because black licorice is poisonous to ponies. Obviously. And it seems that for her protection, three covert law enforcement agents are aerially escorting her to Queen Lycra by, by direct request. Oh dear, wait. Does this mean our queen is under the inclination that only she herself would be allowed to consume poor little fruity? Listeners, I... I'm sorry, I need to go for a second. While you're waiting, here's another word from our sponsors. Come on down to Leafy Green's Grocery! We promise that absolutely none of our vegetables have preserved hallucinogenic carcinogens. None that you like, anyway. I mean, really, who eats eggplant? At Leafy Greens, all of our eggs are organically grown from all-natural cockatrice farms, and they almost never have any anything in them that would cause them to hatch before you bring them home. No pony has ever been petrified by cockatrice chicks. Our deli even stocks a wide variety of meats for all of the different tastes of the genetically carnivorous members of our city. And even if you don't eat meat, come on down to our deli anyway. We make a delicious Amish potato salad, made from real Amish potatoes and real Amish potato farmers. Leafy Greens. Don't wait for your mouse in the rain in the rain, y'all. Don't wait for your mouse in the rain. Listeners, I would like to state an apology to our queen on the air before I recite this turn of events. Your Majesty, please, please forgive my rash action. It was a poor choice on my part, I admit, but given the severely limited information I had received from the press release, I felt that it was the most rational thing to do at the time. That said, I am thankful for the decision that you have made regarding little fruit, <clears throat> young Miss Fructose Syrup. I would also like to apologize regarding another point of confusion, listeners. Um, as a personal note, I tend to call Miss Fructose Syrup Fruity as a fun nickname for her. And that is not only confusing to you all, especially Tutti Fruity and Thuper Fruity, but it is also very unprofessional of me. And where is this? Here we go. Now, back on topic, Her Royal Majesty Queen Lycra has made her decision regarding fructose syrup. First, she will be required to wear a full-body skin suit made out of plastic akin to a candy wrapper completely around her body in public to prevent any un other unauthorized confectionery consumption. Second, the 46 fillies and colts that had swarmed her previously are all now having their stomachs pumped and are all receiving precursory medical and magical examinations for necrotizing sucrosis in the event that a previous test missed any unknown strains, as it was not considered that a candy zombie would be eaten by an uninfected individual, and not the other way around, as is usual. Third, Queen Lycra has officially given fructose syrup an individuality insignia. A group of eight isosceles triangles of varying lengths that overlap in such a way over a white crisp rice treat to look like fangs. And the final note here is, well, I was requested to keep this one private, under demands by the High Commander, but, well, maybe it wasn't the High Commander. I mean, all members of the covert law enforcement agency that protects our fair city wear the same thing, which is the High Commander as well, whom is occasionally allowed to remove their hood, but 
The one that gave me this scarlet envelope did not have their face exposed, so... Let's see here. Due to your concern for fructose syrup's well-being, I am making an exception regarding the appointment of an official covert law enforcement guardian surrogate. I officially appoint Vocal Fry as the legal guardian of fructose syrup. She will be allowed to assist with his duties as a member of the community radio station by reciting this broadcast's ending segment, The Letter to Queen Lycra, pending future releases. Listeners, uh, wow, this is... Well, I suppose I know why I wasn't supposed to read this live over the air. I, I'm speechless. Oh, oh wait, there's an addendum here that has just now appeared to be burned into the paper magically possibly as a reaction to me reading from the notice aloud. Well, in for a bit, in for a barrel, as they say. And let's see. If you are reading this, then that means that you have ignored the recommendations of the High Commander. You were told not to read this aloud in order to prevent the community's collective assumption that our Queen offered you guardianship to fructose syrup due to favoritism. As a result, you will receive a demerit, which will result in a deduction from your paycheck, and you will also be given temporary detention until the next broadcast. Oh dear. Uh, Sorry, Fruity, I think that we're going to have to be shopping for instant noodles for a while, but hopefully you'll be able to cook that on your own. Uh, Don't worry about me. I'm sure I will be fine. I think. Stay tuned next for the sound of a handsome young stallion danseur working up a glistening sweat while practicing alone in an empty studio. Good night, Duskmire, and good morrow. Greetings from Duskmire is a fan work based on the concepts of Welcome to Night Vale and My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. It is produced and written by Jordan Hofling. The voice of Duskmire is also Jordan Hofling. My Little Pony is copyrighted by Hasbro, and Welcome to Night Vale is produced by Commonplace Books. And Greetings from Duskmire, as a fan work, is not to be sold for profit. Donations may be accepted, if applicable, as the writer works at a job that pays too little and works him significantly too hard for what he does.